Hello everyone, I'm Shiba. In this lecture, we will introduce the fundamentals of human geography. Before we begin this chapter, let us refresh our memory by revising what we have learned in class 11. We studied the link between the human geography and the modern discipline that is geography. We've also studied about the various branches of geography based on the systematic approach. Here, you see the various branches that sprout from the body of geography. Do you remember this table? Yes, it is given in class 11th geography textbook. In the following lectures, we will study about the sub-branches that are highlighted in the given table. It shows social geography, historical geography, rural and urban population and settlements. Also, we will learn about the primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary activities practiced in different parts of the world. Geography as a field of study is integrative, empirical and practical. Let us learn to understand what does it mean. Firstly, geography is an integrative study. It recognizes the fact that the world is a system of interdependencies. It teaches us that interrelationship between man and environment. How we humans depend on the availability of the resources and how resource development depends upon the technology. It forms a complex web. Its approach is holistic in nature. That is what it makes geography an integrative study. Secondly, geography is the study which is based on observations rather than theory. It is pure logic. It studies the phenomena. And thirdly, geography has practical applicability. The very first definition of geography that we all have learned is probably the simplest of all. That is, geography is the description of Earth, isn't it? We study two major components of the Earth. And these two components of the Earth are, first, the physical environment, which includes mountains, plateaus, plains, rivers, etc. And the second component of the earth includes all the life forms, that is the plant and the animal kingdom. The interdependency of these two components will help us to understand human geography. It is a core concern of geography to understand man and environment relationship and their impact on each other. Yes, the core concern is to understand man and environment relationship and their impact on each other. Now let us look into the approaches. There are two major approaches to study geography. These are the contrasted aspects. Hence, geography got subjected to dualism. The two major approaches to study geography are the systematic approach and the regional approach. In systematic approach, a phenomena is studied world over, whereas in regional approach, all the phenomena of a small region are studied in detail. The two approaches are contrasting. Hence, the debate started whether it is to be considered a lawmaking that is known as nomothetic, or is it to be considered descriptive, which is known as ideographic. Here comes the diatomy. Dualism talks about lawmaking and descriptive. The dichotomy comes in this area of geography. Given are a few definitions by the world's renowned geographers, let us look into their perspective, how they define geography. Ratzel defined geography somewhat like this. Human geography is the synthetic study of relationship between human societies and Earth's surface. Frederick Ratzel was a German geographer and he laid the foundation of human geography. So, it is very important to look into this definition. In his definition, the two components, that is, the human societies 
and the Earth's surface have been enveloped together to clearly explain their interdependencies. Ellen C. Semple defined human geography as, human geography is the study of changing relationship between the unresting man and the unstable Earth. She was an American geographer. She not only established the interdependencies between the man and the Earth as Rattasil did, but also explained the ongoing interaction between the ever-developing man and the ever-changing Earth. Paul Weidel de la Blush defined geography as the conception resulting from a more synthetic knowledge of a physical laws governing our Earth and of the relations between the living beings which inhabit it. He was a French geographer and he introduced the concept of possibilism, which we will be learning in the forthcoming lectures. He expressed that nature does not have a rigid and definite boundaries on human activities, but the humans have the ability to transform the nature. Based on these definitions, we proceed further and try to understand the nature of human geography. We learn the interrelationship between the physical environment and the socio-cultural environment. Now, what is the socio-cultural environment? Socio-cultural environment is a collection of factors which includes the traditions, beliefs, level of literacy, etc. To understand it better, let us look into the life of a tribal boy who lives in Abhijwad area of central India. It is 250 kilometers from the capital city of Raipur in Chhattisgarh. Look at the map. The region is highlighted in red. Abhijpan district is in Narayanpur. He lives in the forest with a very few huts around. His body is barely covered with clothes. Here in this picture, a young tribal boy is seen playing with a wild animal. He carries an axe and wanders in the forest. This tribe practices shifting agriculture. Do you remember the slash and burn agriculture, which is considered as the most primitive form of agriculture? Yes, it is still practiced in some parts of the world. He lives in close association with nature. He revers the powers of nature. Fruits, succulent leaves and roots are his food and he collects herbs from the forest to trade for the things of his daily needs. I hope you remember barter system. It is the exchange of goods in terms of goods and not in terms of currency. This reveals the development level of that region. Here, they do not even follow the modern calendar, but position of the sun and the moon are their reference for the dates. They have no evidence in the form of written literature of what their ancestors have taught them. Rather, they refer to their own faint memories and they live on. To summarize, they are illiterate, lack modern technology, unaware of the techniques that can modify the nature according to their need and improve their lifestyle. They hesitate mingling with the civilized world. This type of primitive society lives in complete harmony with their natural environment. The nature dictates their activities because level of technology is very low. This type of interaction between primitive human society and strong forces of nature is termed as environmental determinism. We can also call it as naturalization of humans. In order to understand the term possibilism, let us take another case study, but this time from the civilized world. A lady who lives in Trondheim. Do you know where this city is located? Well, this city is located in Norway. It is the third largest city of Norway after Oslo and Bergen. 
It is fueled by large student population. It buzzes with life. Tall green buildings, network of roads and flyovers, and many universities makes this city a glorious city. It lies on 63 and a half degree north latitude. We can imagine the freezing temperatures all through the year. Also, the duration of day and night is not the same as that of the cities located in the lower latitudes, for example, Mumbai, Bangkok, Abu Dhabi, Cairo, Delhi, etc. In Trondheim, the daylight subsides barely for an hour only to be replaced by twilight in the month of June. Imagine sunlight all day through. Of course, this also has the opposite effect in winter with the number of days when the sun will not rise at all. In spite of all the odds, the life goes on in Trondheim. Here people use special tires to brave the snowy roads. Technology keeps them warm indoors with the help of central heating system, while outside it is freezing cold. The quick air transport has reduced the time distance between the faraway places and the liberal trade policies have enabled them to enjoy and relish the taste of some of the tropical fruits which are imported from many countries. Yes, they move from the state of necessity to the state of freedom by applying techniques, not like the tribal population or the tribal groups that we have discussed just now. This is what we call it as possibilism, where we create cultural landscape in contrast to get adapted to the dictates of nature. Humans create cultural impact everywhere for example, we have cut through the isthmus of Suez, created a canal to shorten the distance between Asia and Europe, which has increased the trade manifold between many countries. Also, placing our satellites in the space has enabled us to communicate even to the remotest parts of the world. All such efforts of man makes the nature humanized. So, we say humanization of nature or possibilism. Now we see another concept which was coined by Griffith Taylor. He gave the concept of neodeterminism or the middle path. Explicitly he explained the term by drawing our attention towards the traffic light which we all follow for the smooth traffic flow. When we look at the red signal we stop. We wait and do not move until the light turns green. If we dare to do so, it might be fatal for us. Red, we should be warned of the damage caused to nature by the excessive and reckless use of the resources. Amber, we must pause, give some time to the resource to replenish. Green, modify the resources with the help of the technology available. We should not forget that nature has enormous potential for everybody's need and not for anybody's greed. It conveys a very important message to the developing economies to utilize the resource without damaging the nature. We must learn the judicious use of resources. Excessive exploitation of nature would bring adverse effects. The free run which the developing economies adopted has already damaged the nature and we see its effects. To mention a few, ozone layer depletion, global warming, degrading land, receding glaciers and greenhouse effect. We can conquer nature by obeying it. We have to respond to the warning signals and restrict our activities. That is what he meant by traffic signal. Neodeterminism conceptually attempts to bring a balance between the physical environment and human activities. We see a gradual change in the field of geography. 
the interaction between man and the environment and also amongst the different societies and the knowledge changed gradually with time. However, the role of travelers and explorers to share the information about the areas they visited is worth mentioning. The early colonial period was marked with the explorations, when traders discovered the potential areas and extended trades with those countries. The later colonial period was the regional analysis time. We see the quantitative revolution world over in late 1950s and 60s. In 1970s, the time emerged as for the humanistic, radical, and behavioral school of thought. This was the time when human geography took a new avenue with humanistic school of thought, dealt with the social concerns. Radical school compelled people to reason out the cause of poverty and social inequality. And behavioral school of thought gave a liberal thought of freedom towards race and religion, to be vocal about religious tolerance. Human geography explains the interrelationship between man and the elements of nature differently in different parts of the world. The given table is self-explanatory. It reveals the expanding realm of human geography. It talks about the fields and the subfields of geography. There are six fields of geography that I will be explaining in the forthcoming lectures. These are social geography, urban geography, political geography, population geography, settlement geography, and economic geography. They are further divided into various subfields and we will talk about these topics as well. Before we conclude, let us glance at the topics we have already learned. We have learned geography as a discipline. We have learned about determinism and possibilism with the help of the two case studies. We have learned about neo-determinism. And we have also learned about the fields and the subfields of geography. In the lectures that follow, we will study about the real wealth of the world, that is, the world population. The components of the population change and we will keenly look into the demographic attributes. Thank you.